hello guys um this is another video so we are here to talk about inner join now inner join creates a new result table by combining column values of two tables table one and table two based upon the join predicates remember cross join we had no on clause we had no join predicate right now the query we will see all this as we move on the query compares each row of table one note the query compares each row of table one with each row of table two to find all pairs of rows that satisfy the join predicate right so when the join predicate is satisfied the column values for each match pairs of rows and of a and b are combined into a result row so the thing is the basic thing is an inner join is the most common and default type of join you can use inner keyword optionally so what inner join does is in simple terms it finds common information between two tables, two or more tables, right? The common rules, the common rules, it finds that common information between the two tables and then brings out everything in a result set, right? So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, so following the syntax of, follow, the following is the syntax of inner join. So select from table one, inner join. So it's optional. You can either put join, depends on your, the, the 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 SQL program that you're using, maybe Postgres or Microsoft SQL Server or MS SQL. So it depends, right? Um, you can either write inner join or you can just leave the inner and then put join, right? So select from table one, inner join, table two, right? You need to put that on clause, right? So what are the common columns, right? What are the common columns in both tables? Remember what is the primary key and foreign key, right? Because the primary key would be on that main dimension table where it will be unique. And then on the other table, it will be a foreign key, right? So you need to have that common column between the two tables for you to be able to use this on clause, right? Now, to avoid redundancy and keeping the phrasing shorter, inner join conditions can be declared using using the expression. Yes, very true. true. This expression specifies specifies a list of one or more columns okay so yes let's just go to based on the employee and department tables you can write an inner join as follows now remember our table employee and department table that's what we've been using right so let me go to get that table once again so we'd have it visible so this is the table so let's copy oh whoa, 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 whoa. what did i do what did i do i'm sorry guys i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry yes let me drag this yeah so yes so we'll just go to edit we'll go to edit so we'll have that option of selecting yes so this is the table right so this is our table so we want to have it on yes let's copy then we move back to inner join Yeah. So let's paste. Um, so based on it, so let's paste it here, right? So we'll be able to see. Yeah. So we have it. So this is our two tables that we want to join in using the inner join, right? So now remember, it says that we want to find the common columns between two tables, right? So in this sense, now when you use your inner join and you tell your SQL, right? You tell SQL that okay, in my final result, I just want to see my employee ID, the name, the department, right? Now, employee ID definitely is employee ID, right? And remember that employee ID is also the common column, right? Then your name. Name is definitely not in our department table, so we know that we want the name from our employee table, right? And then our department. Department is definitely not in our employee table we have it in our department table so these are the columns that we want in our results right now it says from what table do you want to, from employee table which is this then please inner join department so now check for the common records between these two tables and then bring it out under this column name that i need right now put what is the common column beef between these two tables definitely is our employee id right because it is in our employee table and also it's in our department table the primary key and foreign key as well so we'll do on employee right dot employee id this one 
right? Equal to department.employer ID, this one in our department table. That's basically what this unclose does, right? So I can still come here instead of doing this. I can come and say, right? I can come and say using because I know the common column is my employee ID. I can do using employee ID and it will still work, right? This is what using this what I did here is what we're trying to explain here, saying that. So I've already done that say, and keep phrasing shorter, keep the phrasing shorter. Enough join conditions can be declared using a using expression, right? That is what I just did here. So instead of using your on this, on that, you can just put using and then your common columns, right? Your common column between the two tables, which in this case is our employee ID, right? So I'll go and then we'll paste back. So we'll have that. So after doing this, this is our result, right? Our result now is... The above query will produce the following result Paul, Allen, and then James. Right? Paul, Allen, and then James. Paul, Allen, and then James. Paul, Allen, and then James. Why Paul, Allen, and then James? Paul, Allen, and then James. So he goes and he looks for common columns and then he populates it to you. Right? Now notice that, notice that he goes and he says that, okay, please, I'm using my employee ID, right? Now this employee ID is also situated here, right? So what employee has employee ID one? Definitely this Paul, right? He brings out every information about Paul, the Paul, Paul, and then the department. Remember we say we just want the name and then the department. So he brings Paul. Because the ID here is one, ID here for employee table is Paul, and the ID for one here for department is IT billing, right? Now he brings it out. Now he goes again, employee ID is two. What name has two in this employee table? It is definitely Allen, right? Right? It's definitely Allen, right? It brings out Allen, and then our two, what corresponding rule is definitely engineering, right? That is why you have engineering here. And then seven, right, which is this. These are the common records, right? Employee ID seven is definitely James, right? And then the next thing is finance. And he brings out James finance. Those are the common records, right? I hope that is clear. But now let's head over to our SQL lines and then see a little example. So let's move on. So I think we stopped here in our previous video. So let's start. SQL or other in our join. Yeah, so let's say this basically this simply simply. For the right word, which is common info between two tables. Now let's go. So let's say we've been told to write a query that returns albums. Have that track. So what does this mean, right? We want to return albums that the, the title of the album also has a track in that album that is also named as the album title, right? I come again. Let's say you have a a Davido's album, <laughs> a Davido's album that um, it has uh, what example? So the title of the album is Running to You. Right. And then there's also a track in that Davido's album that has run into you track as well. So we want to be able to get a query that returns all albums that also have a track in that album that is named after the album. Right. That's basically what we want to do. So, we would... so now, first thing that you need to ask yourself, track, album, right? Those are two tables that you're asking yourself. Okay, let me go and see what is underneath this table right track and album we want to be able to see albums that have 
title of the track to be the same. That's basically what I want to do. I want to see album names that have name of their track or title of the tracks to have the same name as their album. So I'm looking at names, I'm looking at title, I'm looking at albums, I'm looking at that track. You see? So let's go to check what our album table looks like. So our album table looks like this. You see? Album ID, title, and artist ID. Right? Fine. So we want to be able to check what track also have the album name as their own track name. Something like that. That's basically what I want to do. So we are looking at our album ID and our title in this sense. So let's go to track. Let's see what it entails. Track. Go to track. Okay. We have our track ID. We have name. We have album ID here as well. We have media type ID, general ID, composer. So I think what we need is basically the name. Name in our track table and then title in our album table. Right? Title in our album table. Name in our track table. Fine. So we'll come and we'll say yes, we have all what we need. We do select first of all album id so we'll be able to have um, the album unique ids of these albums right we need to have the identifier of this album even if we know that yeah, we're interested in the title of the album right we also will want to get the id of this album right so we'll do select ID, album id Title, remember title in our album table, and then name in our track table, right? That's that's basically what we want to see. We want to see all this to, to confirm if we have a title in our album table that also have a track, a name of a track in the track table. That's basically what we want to do, right? So we do select all this from what are we considering? Album. We are looking at album table, right? In our journal, we want to get the common rules that has the same album name, right, as their one of their tracks title or track name. In our journal, track. So we are basically using tracks. That's the table track, right? So remember your own clause. Very important. Um. Now, it goes to show that we also need to do our alias in this sense, right? You can also do as A, right? As T. So instead of doing this, I can still wipe this up and just clean, just make it like this. Leave a space and then album A, right? So give it an alias, but let's leave it as as. So in case anybody don't understand this, as T. Okay, so on our own clause, we we'll say on. Remember what is your common column in this sense it is definitely our name and title, right? That is the common column. We'll do on our album dot what is the column that we are interested in? That is also in our track table. It is definitely title. So in our album table we named the column title, but in our track table it is name. That we gave it as the column name, right? So in our album table, we say title equal to equal to. We are looking at our track table now, right? Track dot. We don't have a title column in our track table, right? We don't have a title column in our track. What we have is a name, and it's basically name of our track, just the same way the title of the album is, right? So we'll go back and say. We are looking at t dot name. Yeah. So in that sense, we can also do here a dot album. Right. So basically, it wouldn't cause an issue because this is a different name compared to this, right? So it didn't cause an issue, even if we do a dot title. So we signify that this title is actually in the album table. Then we we'll come here and do t dot name. So we'll be sure that. Your name column is the one inside our track table. That's what we are interested in. So if we do this, if I run this, let's see. See now. So you see? So we've been able to get that common column, right? Where the title name of the album is 
the same thing as the name of the track of a track in that album so in this sense we have one track in this boss to the world title or in this boss to the world album we have one track called boss to the world as well right we also have in this uh, album title or album that has restless and wide we also have a track in that album that has restless and wide right? that's basically what we just did so we used inner join to get that common information between two tables very important right so in that sense and in that light we've come to the end of today's video and i will see you guys on the next one take care